Executing a meeting of the Cannabis Control Board of the uh, City of Jersey City. Thank you. Uh, September 12, 2023, at approximately 5 p.m., <clears throat> in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, known as the Sunshine Law. Adequate notice uh, of this meeting was provided by mail, and there are facts to the Jersey Journal. That's not the one. Is that the one that's dead? I always say the same thing. And the reporter. Roll call, please. Vice Chair Cantorero. Present. Commissioner Kaplowitz. Present. Absent. Physically. Uh, oh, we have the wrong name on here. Commissioner Sloan is absent. A chairperson... Bunny is absent, and we have Commissioner Dublin. Present. Thank you. All right. Uh, with respect to uh, the chair and Commissioner Sloan, I, I know that she had indicated that somebody may have had COVID and she got in contact with him, and the chairperson is not feeling well. Could I have a motion followed by a second to excuse those two individuals? Motion. motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, all right, we're going to uh, dispense with the reading of the announcement. And is uh, anybody here on Kind Buds? Fruquan is not here, so you want to jump to uh, all right, um, a higher ground dispensary. Nice to see you again. Please enter your appearance into the record. Good evening, Eleanor Webster, Connell Foley, uh, for a higher ground dispensary. Right, that's at 107-111 West Side Avenue. That is uh, correct. At least one commissioner. You want to take it from here? You're the realtor. Yes. Uh, basically, re after reviewing the application, uh, one of the requirements through the Jersey City Ordinance is that either the applicant must own or have a verified signed lease. In the application, you have one paragraph, your client has a one paragraph uh, LOI standing for letter of intent that starts off by this is non, you know, you know, uh, non binding, non binding, and uh, it doesn't have any details in regards to price, length of lease, or anything else. Therefore, it's invalid as site control. So, I would suggest that the board simply carry the matter as opposed to uh, voting on it. <laughs> I, I would agree. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there a motion to carry motion. this? Motion. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, is that till next month or the next meeting? When, you know, when any idea? We're, are we booked? Is it November? Be booked for October and November. December we'll, we'll it is. To, we, we can put them in. Okay. We'll put right. you in there October. You October it is. There you go. Right. What's the date? October. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll see you guys can, in October. Have sure. a great night. Thank you very you much. You too. Thank you. And we'll All right. try to get our the, the lease to you guys in the next couple of days. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. All right. So first on the agenda, I still don't see Fruquan. It's uh, CCB 23-23. Uh, no, that's 23-67, uh, Vokes, Vokes, Vokes Farms. Well, couldn't we just, uh, we already oh, got, sorry. no, with re regards to kind buds, we had, we had an, uh. He's not we, here. But, we, but we've yeah. been notified in. Yeah, via, in, via in writing. In writing requested to in the, the German. board members asking for a, a delay, I mean, to carry. So there was an email, so do we really need him to put it on the record? Well, let me just tell you what transpired. Uh, okay. Uh, Fru Quant, Mr. Mazan called me or sent me an email, and then I forwarded an email <laughs> which indicated due to the late request for an adjournment, um, oh, somebody okay. should be showing up and explaining or at least asking why, explaining why or asking for the adjournment. I certainly, it's the board's pleasure, but... I had had, based on that email that uh, gotcha. was sent to him okay. by a member of the staff, uh, that somebody needed to show up due to the late timing of the request. Um, so presumably okay. somebody will show up. But That was a request from the board at other meetings. If it's less than two weeks, they wanted right. someone to show up. You're and right. that email okay. went to him, and, and uh, he said that he would be showing up. Okay, so let's move him to the uh, end of the yeah, agenda. We'll, we'll move him to the end, yep. That works. All right. So then, again, uh, CCB 23-67, Vox uh, Forms. This was carried from the October 14, 2023 meeting. Uh, come on. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, you, you can stand. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, if you'd be so kind as once you get settled to please enter your appearance into the record. And Rose, just explain where we're at. I've forgotten whether this was simply carried because we were waiting for security. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. Rosemary Moyano Matos of the Law Office of Rosemary Moyano Matos LLC appearing on behalf of the applicant Vox Farms. At All right, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to clarify. At the last meeting, we had presented our application. Um, at the last minute, we found out that the police department had um, required more information for the security plan, so we were carried and we submitted an updated plan. And that was the only thing, correct? That was the only thing. All right. Um, do any of the board members have any questions for any of the witnesses so far? <coughs> I don't believe I've opened it up to the public. No. Uh, we mm -mm. We stopped it at that point. Okay. All right. So I'll repeat. Any questions for any of the witnesses? Maybe I'm sorry. I'm, we yeah. did have public comment. Oh, we did? Did we? Yes. Okay. We had speakers on behalf of the applicants as well. Yeah, it's a cannabis board. You know what happens. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough, then. Um, well, then I'll bring it back to uh, the day as to see what the uh, board's pleasure is. Yeah. Just give the chair a minute. I yep. guess he's he keeps very I'm good just, notes. I'm uh, just looking <laughs> at my notes. Just give me one second. And um, Lieutenant Calton did reach out. And he said that the revised plan was approved by JCPD. So Great. Thank we did you. get that in writing. I don't think I had any questions for them last Any other questions? I don't think I had any other questions either. Uh, so board's open for a motion. Yes, it is. I just want to read something real quick and then... Well, why don't we do this while you're looking? Um, do you have any submission, counselor? Anything you want to add to your client's application at this point? Um, I guess just in, in summary, the applicants are applying for a micro cultivation <clears throat> at 80 Harrison. The uh, team consists of veterans, um, all um, with background in compliance and security. And I believe. You know, based on the information that we've submitted, we've met all the requirements of the ordinance. I don't think. Well, then with that, unless the chair is still looking for. Just, yeah, just look. Oh, why don't we do this while we're waiting? Uh, Fruquan, why don't you come up, <clears throat> enter your appearance at the podium? Uh, please. Stuck in the loop. That's quite all right. It took me an hour and 20 minutes. So, yeah. Uh, turn that on. Thing testing. Um, Fruquan Muzan of Fox Rothschild. I'm here on behalf of Kind Buds. And, and you are here because you need to uh, carry this application. Yes, need to request a modest adjournment. The last time we was here, my client was asked to get more community support. He's been working on it, but not quite ready. So a little short adjournment will be helpful. Any objection by the board members? No, no objection. All right, the motion will be carried. Uh, uh, so Maynard, are we, are we looking at November, October? December. They actually requested November. Yes, but November. I we were both. Oh, the, okay, November. so we'll see you in November then. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else on this? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they were good. I um, moved to motion to vote on the, what are they? I'm sorry. Approval. Um, approval the approval for of Vox Farms. All right. Second. Is, all right. Roll call. Vice Chair Cantorero. Aye. Chairperson Kaplowitz. I've looked at your application. I think that your application and your qualifications and everything is what they required us to look at for an applicant to get approval. Uh, as the last meeting, uh, I said to you that being a past chairman of the planning board, I thought that the zoning director. Uh, Error, erred in her decision, and um, I have a problem with that. I think that your application is good, but I still have that in my mind, so I'll just abstain. Chairperson Marte Dublin. I'm not a chairperson, but I'll take that. Oh, Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> Aye. 
Did we get your vote? Yep. All right. So the motion does carry, even though uh, Com uh, Commissioner Kaplowitz abstained. It follows along with the majority vote, which is a yes. So uh, the motion carries. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Good luck. Hey, why don't you just sign that real quick? We'll mm -hmm. get that out of the way. Sure. Oh, nice signature. All right. Thank you. Put that together. All right, uh, with the board's permission, uh, CCB 23-70, Grass House Company. All right, uh, Councilor, nice to see you again. When you get situated, please enter your appearance into the record and uh, perhaps give us a... Uh, well, at least let us know where we are. This was tabled from the August 14th, 2023 meeting, so maybe you can just uh, explain why it was tabled and then where we're going from here. There you go. Uh, good evening. My name is Bo Huck from Porzio Bromberg Newman here on behalf of Grass House Company. Uh, it was tabled simply because uh, Mr. Price's uh, mother got sick. And oh. oh, sorry. So we didn't hear the application. No. Okay. How's your mom? Oh, uh, that doesn't matter. Thank God. Good. Thank, Thank you. God. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah. All right. So why don't you tell us what this application is about and who's going to be testifying? All right. Tonight, this is uh, a class five uh, annual application, social equity. Uh, here I have uh, Mr. Michael Price, Mr. James Dirkma, and Gassan Hasham, and also known as Gus. I am actually very disappointed in Gus right now because he's actually cleaned up and not covered in, uh, in uh, uh, motor oil. Um, I apologize. It's Mr. Price. Mr. Price. Mr. Dirkma. Got it. Okay. And Gus. Uh, these gentlemen are going for a business at 523 Tunnel Avenue. And so far, things are moving along pretty uh, smoothly. As mentioned, it is an annual application. Um, this means they have yet to apply to the state simply because it's a one-shot deal. Right. And uh, it's been approved for zoning. It's got sufficient uh, traffic studies as far as uh, traffic dynamics as uh, the traffic engineering entity uh, looked at the, the location and said this is an area that needs seven spots they have over 14 at the location um, and mr. price here is uh, really gonna tell a bit more about himself I can be quiet now because you don't really want to hear from me I'm not the Jersey City guy uh, plus you can't testify so why don't we start with mr. price please raise your right hand do you swear firm the testimony about to give the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God yes. all right your witness counselor all right First off, how do you navigate traffic in this city? <laughs> I apologize for running in a little late. Uh, I know this is a thankless job. I just would like to start off with that. Are those, microphone, are those microphones on? It's coming on and off, but this, on. this one's on right now. Right. Can you hear me? Oh, is yours on? Yeah. Mine's on. All right, good. There we go. Just talk a little louder. Yep. Got good. it. For us old folks. <laughs> Present company included. Right. Mike, why do you want to do this? It's nuts. It is. It is nuts. Well, I have a passion for it. This is uh, everything I've ever done, every decision I've ever made, every bad decision I've ever made, every good decision I've ever made has led me here to this. And I'm just happy to be here. I'm, happy, I'm blessed. I'm lucky that I have such a good team and uh, the property, and I just feel lucky. You born and raised here? Born and raised in Jersey City. And what was your passions growing up? I uh, played sports. Sports was huge in my life. Which sport? Uh, baseball. Okay. And what do you see this business is giving back to the community? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, just to see the evolution of everything. Um, from being incarcerated for it to now. Um, you know, I just, you know, it's, it's I just want to be... I want to change the stigma a little bit of it. 
And then I just want to give people an opportunity to make better themselves and to, and just to give them the opportunity that I may have been given by you guys today. Um, just to redeem myself and just prove that I'm just more than what my criminal record may, may, uh, display. And are there any local passion projects, organizations that you're looking to particularly work with, partner with? Well, I still reside in Jersey City. I'm, an, I'm born and raised in Jersey City. I'm third generation there. I'm educated in Jersey City. I live on Terrace Avenue um, in the Heights. Um, I reached, um, I'm sat down with Patrick from the Western Slope Neighborhood Association. Um, he has a cleanup and planned, and he has a bunch of other things also planned. And um, just as far as that, that just I just live there in the community, and also. You know, I have other objectives, baseball, the Babe Ruth program, Persian Field, where I've spent nights at. Um, I have so many memories of Jersey City. My first, I, I could go on, I mean, this is, my, this is my home. Have you made any financial commitments to, and volunteer hours for your company? Has your, have your employees done the same? Uh, absolutely. Um, I met with uh, Monique and, um, from Styles House. Um, I, I believe in her mission. She's... Um, with kids aging out of foster care, and um, I made donations. Um, they obviously need supplies. They need help, and um, it's a it's an organ it's 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 a, it's an organization that I really like connect with because um, just based on my experiences, like when I was in grammar school, I was selected for the AEP program, the Academy One program, the, um, in the Snyder, Snyder Annex building, and it just brought me out of my neighborhood. It experienced it exposed me to a whole different world. So what my, Monique is doing um, really hits home because her main objective to me was, yeah, you could donate, you could give me money, but are you going to donate your time? Are you going to show these kids something other than where they're from? Are you going to provide the experience and allow them to open up their horizons just like I was given the opportunity by Jury City by being selected to go to that program? And... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, as far as, let's see here, as far as your security plan, you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, we can discuss it. Um, we, it's going to be security, it's going to be two, two guards, there's going to be one greeting at the main, main, uh, main, main door, there's going to be one circling the area, there's going to be 24 hour, I'll be, I'll be the 24 hour, uh, um, resp re Responder, I guess, whatever. Contact person. Contact, yeah, there you go, thank you. And um, also, um, my director of security, uh, retired JCPD, jo Joseph Walsh. He's also um, involved, and he'll be a 24-hour contact also. And just for the record, uh, Mr. Walsh couldn't be here tonight. He's a, currently a special three officer, and it's back to school night in London. So he apologizes for not being able to make it. Uh, he does intend, obviously, to be full-time as soon as, if the board would be so kind to approve him. Um, now, you said two security guards, but if I'm correct, they're all sort of certified. And that's shifts of two, two at a time, two shifts, or four total throughout the day? I believe it's, it's shifts of two. It's yeah. a shifts of two with, yeah, with two shifts. Okay, very good. Now, as far as your job training plan, as far as describe who you'll be hiring, describe what you'll be paying them. Well, as you can see, I have a letter from Dr. Floyd Jeter, who's the diversity and... and, and <laughs> diversity and inclusion director. Inclusion director, yes, correct. And he has these cannabis uh, fair job fairs. Um, so we want to diversify our, 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 our employees and obviously I'm Jersey city and, um, just give everyone an opportunity to, to, and inclusion in our business. What does year one look like? It's about 10% employees, 30%, 50%. I would say a hundred percent. Eventually in time, I mean, but first year one is about. North of 50. 50. And total number of employees your first year you're hoping to hire is going to be about what? I mean, initially it's going to be six, and then hopefully we grow to 18. 
And do you have any desire to contract with any specific vendors, any types of vendors? Of course, uh, we're going to diversify and, and, um, and just include, yeah. Inc Ballpark after year one, what's the percentage you think you'll have as far as pin down vendors? North of 25% that are uh, MWB certified? That's fair, yes. Exactly. And do you intend on playing above the minimum wage for bud tenders? Yes. And would that be for full-time or part-time? It'd be part-time, 20, 20 an hour. Okay, so like 20 to 45 an hour, that sound right? Yep. Okay. And for full-time employees north of 32 with benefits? Yes. To 65, is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. And let's see, what's your intention on hiring those with special needs? I would love, we're going to have programs and just, uh, and I would hire, hire, include special needs also, yes. Work with local community colleges, Correct. trade schools, any other type of special needs schools in the area? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any so, questions from the board members? You said how many people do you intend to hire in the first year? Six initially, and then 18 okay. is our goal, I guess. So, uh, Michael. The, it's I, just, um, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Um, in your application, you listed 18 for the first year. Well, yeah, I just, when we, I, I, it says six there starting initially, and then hopefully getting to 18. And I can yeah, six within the 120 days and about 18 for the first year. Correct. Right. Just for the record. Yes. Okay. Uh, just so that I can clarify, it looks like the initial application, you had your landlord having 5% of the business. That's correct. Um, um, right. Yeah. Oh. But that's no longer the case now. You own 51% and the individual, no? It's, fifth, it, it's 51, 44, and, and 5 for the landlord. This one says 51 for you and 49 for James. And yeah. this one says five. I can, uh, point, I can clear that up. Initially, there was discussion about applying as a conditional, and then they realized due to the proximity, the, the setback issue, uh, they were concerned about that pathway, so they thought applying as an annual, meeting all the, uh, the appropriate requirements as an annual, that would be the cleaner way to go and the simplest thing to do. Explain that. Uh, you lost me on that. So or, the original had, uh, which actually came up to 101%, which was pretty inventive. Uh, Mr. Price had 51%. Uh, Mr. Gasson? Yeah, Gasson. 5%. And Mr. Dirkman, 46%. So now that... that All was right, I don't have that one, but that's okay. Right. So, but now, let's get it straight. So now... It's four percent, right? And you're the landlord. Five percent. Well, he, he's not. He's not sworn in yet. Okay. So, um, so maybe we'll we'll get to that point. Let, let's just answer this question. Right. Um, it's exactly as Mr. Hutch has pointed out that uh, the numbers add up to one hundred percent. The uh, individual sitting at the microphone. So we'll get to that later on. Okay. That clears that up for me. And there's other questions. Oh yeah. We square okay. those folks in. All right. All right. Any any other questions from uh, board members on the testimony that Mr. Price has given thus far? I, I just want to clarify yeah. his answer. Uh, when you kept on saying it'll make your process to get to an annual better. Please uh, yeah, expand on that. Trying to identify the setback issues. So a conditional pathway, there are, uh, applicants are allowed to change locations. So trying to identify exactly where every other applicant is in the city is always going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, that's with the CRC, not Jersey City's problem. This is the state license I'm referring to. And if you apply also to as a conditional applicant, one of the things that's a little bit frustrating, and this goes really for uh, both the, um, well, step back. Um, you're familiar with land use applications? A little bit. <laughs> Sorry. So when somebody does a land use application, it's submitted and it goes for a thorough review, the entire document, and mm -hmm. there's no back and forth with cures. 
With the CRC, um, as soon as they identify a cure, a defect, it goes back to the applicant. There's no shot clock, anything of that nature to keep the so, process okay. going. Okay, so what's the defect? The, the, the defect is as far as any potential timing and cure going back and forth. It's a process that goes on longer. The applicants also, too, can move around by the time they actually submit for conversion. So trying to identify, this is our rock-solid location. We don't jump around. Okay, so once again, uh, there's a problem and there's a cure, but I don't know what the problem is. Explain the problem. Is there a problem with ownership of the property? Is it a problem with being close to another cannabis location? Oh, no. Um, I, I apologize. My, my, my fault. So this is just in the event of any cure defect from the CRC. It's just always a cleaner way because this is a new industry. You never know when you're actually going to run into a hiccup. Um, particularly with vendor contractors, since there's so many of them, and you don't know if any of them are always above board. Um, we don't have that issue as far as we know, but you don't know if you have an issue until you identify it, or the CRC says you do have an issue. So that's why you'd rather just do it in one shot. Okay. So the landlord of the property is being put in to own, and it doesn't matter to me who the owners are. I just want to understand what's, what's being said here. You're just putting them in as an, a partial owner to make sure that there's no problem moving forward with the state. Is that correct? Well, one, well, we have to wait. All right. You know what? Let's swear you in because yeah. we have some burning questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you swear firm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. My name is Ghassan Hashem. Last name is H-A-C-H-E-M. Hashem, I apologize. Yeah, no problem. Uh, just to be clear, my father is the landlord of the property. I'm part of the business ownership group with them. So the landlord is not really... Are you not the yeah. secretary? I'm the secretary. You signed the lease. Yes. Okay. You, you signed on behalf Yes, on behalf. Of, as a secretary. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you're a secretary with that company. Yes. Okay, yeah, so. All right. I have to actually clear it up, I mean. Uh, okay, so th you're, there's you're, absolutely no problem here. There's no problem there, no. There's no defect. Just put that up yeah. for the hell of it. <laughs> no, I, I apologize. Just in it's just always cleaner. The conditional application can always run into certain issues. I'm not a big fan of it personally. Uh, I always like the annual applicants just because you get all your paperwork in order, then you submit to the CRC as opposed to the potential back and forth. Gotcha. So, you know, you, you jumped into, I guess, land use issues, and yes. I'm not sure this is correct, but um, 550 to 560 Tunley Ave, Cush Club is um, less than 300 feet from you guys. Um, they have CCB planning and city council approval. Yeah, okay. Um, Not even a structure there. So, uh, I mean, one of the problems, you know, this board doesn't have to deny somebody because they are less than, but you may have grave difficulty getting past the planning board. You may be off to the zoning board, which is huge. You, you, you follow me, Bo? I do. And which, uh, it was Kush Club, you said? Yes. Building there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that's I would never know except our Cracker Jack staff <laughs> right. yeah. gives us this stuff. And they even change the colors so I can figure out what's going on here. It is a vacant property. Right. Right. Not well, vacant, but no, there's no building. At well, the their, uh, their application, again, was based upon building a building. Yes. But the, the pin goes into the uh, map. The moment that they get approval from us, from planning, and they get a resolution from the council, which then goes to the state. So at that point, it's a designated site. Well, so, this applicant does have all three approvals, from the CCB, from the city council, and from planning. Right. We, we don't know if they, I, I don't know no, if they have CRC approval, yeah. no. but no, we, don't, we, don't, yeah, it's, we don't dive into only that. one. I think Mission. Blossom's only one. So it's a pending CRC a submission, I believe, right? right? So, again, I'll go back to the statement that we consider for our, you know, approval based upon the distance when the pin is put in the map. And we have used the uh, method that when the council 
votes on the resolution, that's when the pin is in the map. Just for instance. Just for clarification, Go ahead. the pin went in the map on August 16th for Cush Club. Okay, August 16th. For instance, 516 Tunnelly, which is 201 feet away from you, which is Green Stop Wellness, they have CCB approval, but they do not have planning and they do not have council. So there's no pin in that map. Also, to be clear, I mean, we're on 109 South, they're on 109 North. How do you define the footage? I mean, are you crossing the highway with the car going left? Or so basically, is it by a U-turn? Well, it, it has nothing to do with traffic patterns. It has to do with everything with distance. That's how the ordinance is written. You know, just as similar oh, as the ordinance says that you cannot be within 200 feet of a school. The school may be across the street, but it's still 150 feet away. It's still considered within that frame. No, I understand. They, they, yeah. they draw a circle, yes. and it is actually a highly contested or litigated issue. Um, yes. Judges have said, well, wait a minute. It's from your property to the front door of the school, not the school's property. It's all over the place. Oh, and unless the ordinance actually specifically defines how it is measured, um, but th this, this, this board takes that stuff into consideration, doesn't it mean it, that they would approve or deny it yeah, based right. on that issue. In fact, um, <clears throat> one of the sections says the number of cannabis establishments, establishments within close proximity less than 1,000 feet. Um, that's one of the factors that the board you know, looks at. Also, in my perspective, we'd be the only ones on the 109 South as opposed to the ones pending approval or being approved on the northbound way. So it could benefit regarding traffic and, and consumption and, and people going, traveling home to Communipaw as opposed to going down the north side, if you view the map. So I think it's beneficial to have all of these. It's not that we're afraid of competition. We encourage it. Well, I think what we're trying to tell you, it doesn't matter if we vote for it or not, and if it goes to the council or not. Um, there are already in the works lawsuits from applicants who have gotten approval against other applicants who came afterwards. So, you know, you may have to fight this out in court. Understood. Yeah. You may not get to the planning board. They may right. send yeah. you to the zoning board, and if you don't get a dimensional variance from them... We can cross that bridge when it comes. We're prepared for that. Yeah. All right. And I'd also, too, just like to point something out from uh, the traffic, uh, excuse me, dynamic traffic, the uh, traffic engineering firm that we uh, contracted with. Uh, in the report, says it should be noted that since the number of new trips is anticipated to fall below the industry accepted standard of significant increase in traffic of 100 trips. Additionally, NJDOT has determined that the same 100 vehicle threshold is considered a significant increase in traffic. So as far as the location is concerned, uh, this will not be. Oh, again, that's not our concern. I mean, basically, that's a land use issue uh, as part of the approval process for having a traffic study. For us, we're, we're talking about distance. Yes, sir. So, you know, that's our concern is what's written in the ordinance. Understood. Just want to be on the record for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, so one, right. one more witness, right? Uh, well, any more questions for Gus? No. At the moment, no. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear affirm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. James Dirkmont. Last name is spelled D-I-R-K-M-A-A-T. I reside at one... 9821 East Ocotillo Road in uh, Queen Creek, Arizona. Tough commute, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's been tough. <laughs> All right, your, your witness counselor. How do you know Mike? Well, Mike and I um, have been friends for about five years. We met at a cannabis convention out in California years ago and struck up a friendship. And um, uh, I have an extensive uh, experience in the industry. It goes back to um, uh, 2009 uh, from Colorado. And uh, we just developed a friendship and have just fostered it and enjoyed that friendship over the years. And then the idea to uh, do something here, you know, I told Mike I was looking to leave the, 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 the company I was with and do something on my own. And uh, he said, hey, why not do it out here in Jersey City? So um, I said, well, that 
that we could do that. And we started investigating it. And uh, he, uh, Mike's family knows uh, Gasson's family. And, and uh, they said they had a place. And we decided to uh, go check it out and, and see if we could pursue it a little bit further. How many years have you been in the industry? Well, since 2009, so I guess it's 14. Yeah, I was actually present at the very first um, cannabis inspection in the state of Colorado by the uh, what they called the uh, Medical Marijuana Enforcement Division back then. It's changed now, but yeah, I was I was there. I'd explain to them that the leaves were not the part that gets people high. You know, they didn't even know that part of it. So it was kind of, and that was in the city of Denver. Yep. I feel your pain. <laughs> it was an interesting uh, inspection. So yeah. Um, I, I'm, uh, well, I guess I should wait, I should wait for questions, I guess. But I was going to add that I, I'm an attorney. I, um, I've been, uh, I got barred in 2010 and started working as in the industry from that time almost right away because as many people who are familiar with the industry, industry know that's 2009 was when the famous, um, Ogden memo was issued by the Obama administration, which kind of kicked things off. Uh, Colorado already had an amendment on the, on the books that had been passed in 2000. But under the previous uh, uh, administration in Washington, everyone was afraid to do anything. So once that memo came out, um, it was it was the original green rush, I guess you could say. And and I w I got caught up in it. Just I had no involvement in the industry at all. But um, I just happened to get my law license right at the time when it was it was kind of going bonkers. And so I started by default consulting in the, in the industry and uh, um, taking on clients in the industry and helping them get licensed and, uh, and, and go through the process. That evolved over time. While you were in law school, did you do any volunteerism? Oh, for sure. Um, I uh, have a history of, um, I spent eight years with a youth organization um, of a young men between 12 and 18 years, helping them. Um, we, we would do weekday activities uh, after school in the evenings, and we would do all kinds of stuff like going um, uh, ultimate frisbee and um, doing uh, you know, parking lot hockey. I mean, we try to do a different activity every week. Every week, and I spent eight years doing that in Colorado. But I, I, at the time, my my oldest children were very young, and my, my two daughters were very young. So I spent this time with young men, um, uh, you know, kind of during the week because I had the free time then at that time. Okay. All right, any questions uh, from board members uh, for this particular witness? I have a couple of questions. Sure. Are you still a member of the bar in good standing? Yes. Uh, on your application, you said that uh, you did have a conviction. Is that true? A, a conviction? No. Um, a conviction. Uh, criminal? No. There was a, uh, I, have a, I had a suspension on my law license back in 2014 or 15. I, I disclosed that. Uh, on the that, okay, so. yeah, it was a temporary. It was a suspension that I served for ninety days, um, and then I've been reinstated ever since. I think the reinstatement occurred in two thousand fifteen. Right. What I, was the suspension for? Right. Um, the suspension um, had to do with a client of mine who was in the industry who um, had deposited funds in our trust account at my firm, and I did the no-no where you I let him have the checks from the firm. So I didn't I didn't touch the funds, but. I, under the rules, you're not allowed to let a client access it directly. So they deposited uh, partnership funds for a project they were working on in, into the account. Uh, they asked, he asked me for permission to be able to withdraw it when they needed it. I said, sure, um, which was a mistake. <laughs> and, uh, but the, but the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The, uh, the claim was brought by the, uh, the, bo the bar association and didn't allege that I had touched the money at all, but I had done an improper supervision by allowing him to have those checks from the trust account. Fair At the enough. time, their funds were the only ones in the trust account. I didn't have other funds, so but it, they saw it as a, a problem. Um, that client got into um, a dispute with their partnership, and that caused problems that kind of led to complaints to the bar, um, and, and that's one reason why they pursued it. The reason I asked that question is uh, I Googled your name, mm -hmm. and it came up in a Denver Post article in 2013. Uh, this may not be you. No, that's me. That's me. But those that, is that that's a separate. separate. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins was involved in that case. Yeah. All right. Uh, the allegations in this article. What was the outcome of that? 
um, every charge that was alleged against me was dropped, dismissed. Um, and the, order, the judge issued a, you know, in the, uh, an order in the interest of justice, and they were all dismissed. Okay. So and that occurred in, um, I'm going to say March 30th of 2014, that it was dismissed, if I remember the date appropriately. So it's been, been nine years since that got dismissed, yep. And, and those were civil allegations, not no, that was, criminal. That was, right? that was a criminal allegation. They were criminal. criminal it was fraud uh, and uh, illegal. Um. Who brought those charges? So at the time, this was a cannabis. Mr. Hoskins ran a cannabis company. I was a cannabis attorney at the time. At the time, we had an, a gentleman that was the attorney general of Colorado named John Southers. John Th Southers is famous for being anti-cannabis. Um, I think he's the last statewide Republican elected in the state of Colorado. Um, as the attorney general, he went on to be the uh, mayor of uh, Colorado Springs, and he was on a, uh, let's call it a, uh, he was very exuberant about pursuing any kind of a, a pr uh, wrongdoing in the cannabis industry. Um, that case was a very, made a very ugly headline. Um, no one from that case did any kind of uh, jail time. Um, um, almost all the cases were dismissed, except for even Mr. Hoskins. He did take a, uh, I believe he did plead to something, but it didn't lead to jail time. Um, I'm unfamiliar. With was he, it was the case that he pleaded to, part of it. Was that dealing with uh, private cultivation, private sales, and not forming the no, there state? No, there wasn't even an allegation uh, as of anything that was going on that was leaving the state. Matter of fact, I think the allegation was they, one of the allegations out of the many that they came up with, I mean, they came up with a slew that um, were really creative. But one was saying that the product was taken from a, a licensed facility that a license had lapsed and was bringing that to the store to sell. And there was a dispute about whether or not that license had lapsed. Uh, lapsed. Um, there was a partner at the time in Colorado, there was a lot of shotgun um, partnerships that had to happen between the retail and the uh, cultivation. And uh, the, that partner had, uh, had continued to try to run that grow site on his own without merging it fully into the entity and well and, uh, it essentially yeah. says he tried to grow marijuana illegally in the basement of a house in brighton oh mr mr hoskins correct yeah, yeah. his team his that, team right. specifically, that happened a lot in those yeah. days i mean there was a, most of the grows in initially in colorado in those days were in basements and garages i mean it was kind of a wild west but the law they did come up with a law ultimately in in 2010 uh, for but it's your testimony, study. the charges were dismissed. Yes, the charges were dismissed. You've been exonerated. I've submitted that paperwork that uh, they were dismissed and there, there was no conviction. Okay. I think we move on. Yes. All right. Uh, anything else uh, from the uh, members of the board on any of the testimony? Anything? I just, um, I want to hear more about your community impact and who you'll be working with and, of course, if you have any speakers here to speak tonight on your behalf. Well, um. My, my mother does a lot of for the community, Joe Knapp, Smoking Joe, Babe Ruth Program, Persian Field um, is, is, is top of the list. Um, also, I have Monique Wilson here from Styles House. Um, that I, her program is for uh, kids foster, uh, aging out of the foster care. So, um, of course, donations and um, more importantly, my time. Um, that's why we connected so much because just like I said before that um, I've had the experience of moving out of my neighborhood, opening my eyes up to a different world, seeing different possibilities, and that's why we connected so well because she, yeah, of course, the donations are, are appreciated, uh, supplies are needed for kids, but she wants me to take these kids out and show them exactly what I, a different world, show them different possibilities, show them that there is a different there's, there's a big world out there and that's why we connected so well with this with this um with this foundation so if you could just elaborate a little bit on each of the programs and who you'll be working with i did um yeah with, with monique like one by one monique wilson raquel chisholm that's the the president the vice president i went to the i went to the fundraiser i met all the children i have the painting in my house um huh? so um mondays she wants me that I, i'm going to volunteer my time because she works on tuesday and wednesdays so I'm going to provide, go Mondays, donate some of my time, maybe mentor, um, learn as much as I can from the kids as they can learn from me because you, you can see I'm a little... Is there an MOU on this? Or? There is. There is MOU, yes. Signed. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and also work with not only her and the children, um, but, you know... Obviously and you said she's here to speak. She is so. here, yes. Okay. Yes. And... Um, and, and the Western Slope uh, uh, Neighborhood Association where I, where I live in, and uh, they have a cleanup in October. 
they're doing park uh, preservation and uh, rent, 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 rent. And they're here as well. I have a letter here from them. They're, they're here. Oh, they're here. Okay. 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 Yeah. Just Price, I'm assuming that you're the 24/7 contact. I live right around the corner. I could walk down. So, I will be 24-hour contact. Mr. Uh, Dermat. If, I apologize if, if Dermot, I mispronounce yeah. it. It's Dutch. Yeah. Uh, what's your function in the business? Um, I'm, I'm plan on functioning as the CEO of the company. Um, uh, I've been, uh, I have an MBA along with my Juris Doctor. Um, and Mike is, we plan on him running this as a C, uh, operating as a COO and running the day-to-day -day operations. So, so you're moving here? If we get all approved, yes. All right. So CEO and who's going to be the CFO? CFO, we haven't selected one yet, although I'm sure Gasson could probably handle it. <laughs> we haven't selected one yet, but uh, between, between Mike and I, we'll, right. we'll figure that out. And your function, Mr. Hutchum? Yeah. I have a lot of business experience. I've run two businesses, uh, CEO, CEO. Whatever they decide that they want to pigeonhole me in, I can help them out. So bookkeeping, management, Inventory. I've had retail experience before. My family's been in business for, as you've seen, my father's been in Jersey City for over 40 years. He's run multiple businesses. He's always invested in Jersey City. My my mother initially, they both immigrated to Jersey City. They got their start here, which is another reason why when Mike approached me, I had told him before. I said, like, he's like, I'm interested in cannabis. I go for the past two years. I've had a lot of people knocking on my door and harassing me about giving my lease for cannabis. But the number one thing I asked them was, where are you guys located from? A lot of people from out of state, a lot of people from out of the county. And when Mike came to me, I said, if we have a team together, I said, I'd prefer to give a lease out to somebody within the city because my father got established, built his life in Jersey City, and we'd like to transfer that opportunity to another person based out of Jersey City. Fair enough. All right, if there aren't any questions from board members, uh, any questions from any member of the public, questions and questions only for any of the testimony you have heard thus far? All right, hearing none, seeing none. All right, we'll open it up for public. Uh, do you have any more witnesses? From our team, no, but members of the public, yes. Uh, well, wh wh what do you mean? You mean like the MOU folks, is that it? Okay. Uh, all right, well, who would you like to call up then? I have my partner here also. Oh. Well, in the truck, if he wants to speak. Yeah? Yeah. I have uh, Rafael Rodriguez here. I was my uh, a partner in, one of, in, in a company that, that I helped. Well, uh, well, what's the purpose of his testimony? Just, I don't, I'm just a character witness. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand. Do you swear for him the testimony about giving the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Or you can put your hand down, pick up the microphone, turn it on, and please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Rafael Rodriguez, last name spelled R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. Live uh, 9 Patterson Street in Kearney, New Jersey. What would you like to tell the board, sir? I mean, I knew Mike almost my whole life since, like, uh, we played Little League Baseball together. I knew him for, like, 28 years, so he's a great guy, man, you know. <clears throat> uh, I was looking to start a, a trucking business. And, um, you know, it's tough, man, so I ain't really know about it a lot. And he does a lot of information digging. You know, I, I talked to him. He helped me start it up, you know what I mean, like he, from the bottom. You know, I've been, on, I've been in business for five years, and he's been helping me. He helped me ever since I started the business. So. And he just told me to come with him today to, you know, help him out and um, speak on his behalf. All right. Well, thank you for that. Oh. All right. Any other members of the public wish to be heard either for or against the application? Hearing none, seeing none, we'd close that. Uh, I, I, I'd like to hear from some of the people that you said that you're going to do uh, charity work with, the M, uh, you know, Memorandum of Understanding. Could they come up? Monique. All right, uh, good evening and welcome. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear for him the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? You can put your hand down, turn the microphone on. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Good afternoon. My name is Monique Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. 
My address is 9 Van Cleef Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07305. What would you like to tell the board? Um, I just want to talk about Mike and his character. Uh, I met him uh, at a one of our fundraisers at um, Styles House. We have a community center located at 455 Ocean Avenue. Um, and he came in and, you know, inter introduced himself, interact with the kids, interact with our staff. Um, and we just talked and we talked about, you know, what Styles House does for the community in Jersey City. And we are open to uh, help youth aging out of the foster care system as well as uh, having a community center for the teenagers in Jersey City or Hudson County. Um, and when Mike told me that he was interested, uh, I thought it was good. Well, actually, when he shared about his cannabis, um, we talked about the educational part about it when, with the youth. A lot of the kids, you know, they smoke or they'll be around people that do smoke or whatever it is that they do when it comes to the cannabis. So I thought it would be, you know, good for him to educate them and talk to them in a, in a, in, as opposed to wanting to smoke it but to learn about it. And going a little bit further past the cannabis, just knowing that he wanted to work with the kids and, you know, help out and just, you know, see my vision, which was to, you know, help them with the learning and, uh, you know, mental health. How is he going is to help? Is he going to be volunteering hours? Is he giving you money? He's whatever. going to be volunteering hours and giving money. Um, his hours is just contributing to the community. And you guys have a written agreement to this yes. for a certain time. I'm, yes, I'm asking because yeah. all of our applicants have always submitted something in writing that's stating they will laying out exactly what they would be doing what in the community um, yeah. with certain organizations. And I went through your application yeah. twice and I don't see that. Yeah, and I know you mentioned earlier you submitted I mean, one. Unless I'm missing it. Yeah, I mean, unless I I'm just, missing it too, but I don't know if Jeff saw it. I, I didn't see it as well either. Which is why I asked if there was anybody to hear on to speak. But even if they are, like we, I mean, we've seen in the past where someone has come out and said, "I know you run an incredible organization, and I commend you for all the work that you do in the community for our children." But Thank you. sometimes you come up and you'll say something. Not to say that he's not going to hold up his end of the bargain. I'm sure he will. But it's nice to have something in writing that you can hold someone to and say, "Hey, you promised you were going to do X," and then not have that person walk away from something so important. Well, he should have it because we did sign off on yeah. it. Okay. There you go. And yeah. a year yeah. asked for some testimony yeah. as to yeah. whether we, or not we, we signed off on it. Myself and my executive I, we director. Don't, we don't have a copy yeah. Raquel I, within the application for yeah. us. So, at some if you point, have one, oh, yeah. that would be great. Uh, my apologies. It's all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions for this witness? No. I know what she does. Thank no. you. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, I definitely, I, I didn't see this. Well, live testimony is, is is better than that, but now you've got both. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, any, anyone else? Good evening, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear affirm the testimony about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? You can put your hand down, turn the microphone on. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, Patrick Ambrosi, uh, that's A-M-B-R-O-S-S-I. Uh, I am here representing the Western Slope Neighborhood Association in the capacity of uh, vice president. Um, so I met Michael um, uh, roughly around three and a half weeks ago. Um, we went down to uh, Geno's, uh, which is both of our kind of favorite spots. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. But um you know, we, we talked about um, his desire to enter the cannabis industry, and it's something that, you know, as, as, a, as an involved member of the community, it seems like that's the talk around the town, uh, uh, a lot, especially up in the Heights, with as many applicants that have um, applied. Um, and one thing that I like about Michael um, that I think we've kind of seen uh, here today, you know, he's a little timid, right? He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's shy. Um, and... Uh, I, I, that's one thing that I actually kind of I liked about him because um, he wants to go and do the work, you know, um, and he's looking at uh, individuals within the community who are active in the community to kind of um, point him to the right direction on how he can be helpful instead of just saying, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a program or I'm going to do my own uh, little activity. Uh, he's, he wants to add to the community, not just do his own thing. And like you guys said, uh, uh, you know, maybe he does it, maybe he, 
he he doesn't. Um, you know, when it comes to the Western Slope Neighborhood Association, uh, we're looking to do uh, cleanups. Um, specifically, we have one coming up in October. It's something that I reached out to Michael about, and uh, we're definitely going to get it in writing now that I uh, know. Um, um, and uh, then within the park, um, you know, the the city council last week passed um, a, um, a resolution that authorized um, the renovations for phase one of Leonard Gordon Park, which is a park within the Western Slope. Um, as soon as that's done, um, we definitely look to take on uh, major planting events and continue the events that we do um, for that community. And, um, and we look to have Michael there, not just in, not just, um, monetarily but also um uh himself and and his employees um you know um for me it's a it's a it's a pretty big deal um to have uh michael take you know reach out to to us and uh, sit down with us because this is a business with specifically within the western slope so a lot of the western slope community uh, i think rightfully is a little um afraid of all the cannabis stores but you know, if we showcase that they're here to do good and by the community, um, I think it'll work out great. I think Michael um, is going to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I'll definitely hold them accountable to it. So um, that's uh, kind of what I, what I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? And then um, quick question. You said there is an written agreement, right? So far? Uh, there is not. Um, but you know we can definitely sit back down uh, and talk about that and 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 see what we can uh, what we can put together and uh, you know um, then they can take it from there. Now, when did he meet with you and your block association or solely with you? Uh, so the block association it was um, at the time was not in session, okay. um, but he will be appearing. Um, and we have yet to come up with a date, but he will be appearing before the board uh, and before the the members of the community um, association. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. Hearing none, seeing none, we'd bring it back to the dais for a motion, either for or against the application. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Went to it, yeah. I motion to walk in, into work session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So essentially a work session is just a discussion amongst the commissioners. It's not a back and forth. <laughs> Unless they have a specific question, you're not to interact. What would you um, like to say? I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you had um, individuals come to speak on your behalf on the work that you'll be doing in Jersey City. Um, Council, if you could just, I know it's not a back and forth, but if you can just kindly send us via email a copy of that MOU that you do have um, already in place, that would be great for our record so that a year from now when we do a renewal, if you get approved, we have that um, in our files as well. I would like to see a meeting. Put, uh, Mike. Oh, I thought I had it on. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to see a little more community impact. I know that... Um, Patrick Ambrosi is here from the uh, Leonard Gordon Park Association, but I would like to see the actual it's like support from the community that's around that's going to be impacted. We've asked that from many other applicants, and it's important because of the fact that we have so many approvals. And as Mr. Ambrosi mentioned, that conversation has become a hot topic, particularly in that area. There's a lot of concerns because so many have been approved, not to say that they're all opening right now, but it is a concern of the community that we've approved so many in the Heights area. So, Sonia, are you able to be a bit more specific when you say you want to see more testimony see, from the... I want to see more testimony from the community. Meaning from their, from residents? Their, from the or, residents that are going to be impacted from this area. I'd like to see meet with the block associations and get more of a dialogue of their concerns because the Heights has been very vocal on how many approvals we have in Ward D particularly. And I get that there's there is a lot... like. For example, Central Avenue. I know that it's not near it, but there is still a lot of approvals there. And I want to see, I want their voices to be heard because when we go out into the community, it's a constant concern. It's a constant complaint. No one comes to us. You keep approving all these locations. We want to, we want to have a seat at the table of what's going to impact them directly. And you should know that this board, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. begged the yes. city go government to require a notice. 
yes. requirement, give notice to residents. It, it just didn't. Absolutely. It because, didn't, I mean, when we're going to put a mural up. It didn't we have fly. To, we, have to imp we have to send an email blast. We have to communicate to every single person that we're going to put a mural up. We have to do the same thing when it comes to something as cannabis or it comes to anything else that's going to impact the community, especially... I, and I'm saying that citywide, but I know that when I go up to the Heights or I go to eat or I'm going to take my children anywhere and they know that I work for the city or they know that I sit on this board, it's a constant um, concern. And I just want to I want them to be heard. And especially being a person from the for this gentleman being living in that community himself, which is super. I mean, I love the fact that you live there. I love the fact that you've not to say you're a great testimony. Um, from where you were and where you're going. I just want to see you inter I want to see more interactment with your community that you're going to impact. Yeah. My concern is uh, the distance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's also yeah. I think that uh, wherever the outcome, it will be a lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah. So go well, ahead. they may not get past the zoning board. <clears throat> well, that's true. too. Just keep in mind with your distance questions that this application was submitted in April prior to their um, Kush Club's planning board approval or the city council. Okay. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Maynard. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That may help. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I just that I the distance is definitely a, a concern as well. But like when you got to hear people's. So would you yeah. Yeah. would you propose uh, carrying this application for I them to we, move? I I do. To I propose because I don't want. I don't want to shoot it down or say no without giving him a fighting chance, especially because he is a phenomenal testimony. You are exactly what I would like to see for someone who was impacted by cannabis to be able to open his own business and do what he has to do. But I want to make sure that all your ducks are in order and your community has been um, touched and so, you've spoken to Counselor, would you want to talk to your client? Well, well we're, we're why not don't going we... back and forth. Oh, well. We're not going back and forth, but... Um... Thank you for sharing that, and thank you for you sharing as well. Um, and with that, I mean, if there's if there's no other concerns, I want to close the. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. A motion to close Second. work session and go back into regular. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, um, from from what I gather, <clears throat> the board would prefer that uh, Michael come back. Certainly, I don't think that uh, Dirk uh, mate Matt mate Dirk mate should have to come back from Arizona. Uh, unless the board requires further testimony. I'm thinking no. it doesn't. No. Uh, now, uh, as far as reaching out to the community, you can use whatever creativity, creativity you want. You can get a list of residents within 200 feet, send them a letter, you can knock on doors. Go ahead. Well, there's no there's no, there, first of all, there's no residents. There's no residents on the highway. Oh. Oh. Exactly <laughs> exactly. So, but, 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 and, and, and no, go ahead. Also, I am in the microphone. I actually mm -hmm. have a coffee shop that I am that I've been procrastinating with because I, this came along. I'm you. You could see it on Kennedy Boulevard on South Street. Mm -hmm. It's all built out. Mm -hmm. I haven't opened it yet because I wanted a coffee shop so I could walk up to it because I didn't like Dunkin' Donuts. It's literally, so this is my community. This is I didn't even That's bring it up I, because I didn't open it. That's but exactly everyone in the community, what I'm saying. you are a person of the community, which is why, even though you are still on one and nine, I feel like your community there's there's more cannabis shops opening, and I get that you're there, but they should still feel like they have a voice on putting giving their opinion on your. We've asked every single applicant. It's not that I'm singling you out, and I love the fact that you are a person of your community, but I still feel that you should reach out to your community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you want us to reach out to the business owners within several hundred feet or more direct residents? More direct residents. I would meet with the Bach yeah. associations, tell them you're opening there, and they may turn around and be like, you know what, we're in support of it. We like the fact that you're on Tunnelly Avenue and give you their support on opening it, but I feel that you should still speak to your... We have the Bach Association. You met only with him, not with his... Um, not with yeah. his members because yeah, they weren't in session. Yeah, yeah it, it's a, it's not. That's why it's best. I I would vote to move it to the next meeting and not vote no. Um, I would or vote yes or whatever the case may be. Everybody, you know, they have their own opinion. But I feel that you should have some community in, um, involvement in your business, even if it is on Tunnelly Avenue. And I know she said residents, but you know, you can open it up to the business owners as well that are nearby. I think the more input that you bring, you know, the more support that you bring from the businesses and from the residents, um, the better it is. So it's a crapshoot. So, you know, it's your choice if you want to vote tonight or not. But I would suggest that meeting with the community 
and then coming back with not just one, but you know, the the, the applications that we've heard <coughs> that there were a dozen p different community leaders, uh, businesses who testified on behalf of the applicant got the greatest review from this board. So, you know, that's a choice you have to make. Whatever you want to do, you know. And, and I know you made a point that you're, you are on Tenerly Avenue, but you are in Ward D at the end of the day. And in Ward D, we have 11 locations with full municipal support. We have four locations waiting for planning and city council, and there's another two applications. So if you tally that up, you have 11, four, and two. That's about 16 different applicants there. Right. So mm -hmm. I do think that 16 is, is, is a high number for Ward D. And I think the more support you get from the businesses and from the residents, the stronger your application will be. Uh, the board is concerned because we have had residents show up and say, how many more on my block? I, so if you could find contrary to that and say we're comfortable with there being, you know, whatever the number is. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're an asset to the community. You're part of the community. I'm sh and your mother's part of the community and very well uh, involved. You know, I think you should utilize those assets. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're clear so that when you come back, we don't want you to come back six times. So you think we have a pretty good handle as to what the mission is? All right. Uh, motion to adjourn followed well, by. Did, oh, I'm sorry. did they agree? They may still want to take the vote tonight. Uh, uh -huh. I think it's highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that we, we, we had a yes on your part. Like I just like the, it, it, it right. just looks right. better, on you, especially because you are a person of your community and you have been impacted by cannabis. And the fact that you're going to go back to your home and you're, cause you, you're still there. And they'll, they'll, the community would just respect that so much more and, and be fair across the board with all the other applicants that have come in front of us. All right, then. Uh, is there a motion to motion. Uh, carry this? Is motion there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, uh, once again, the uh, $64,000 question, can we get them on in October, November, December? We have five already on in October, so it's either going to be October or November. How much time do they feel they need? Michael, how much time do you think you I mean, need? To I could fun. go knock on doors right now. <laughs> I can be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, right. He lives in the community. <laughs> will they, I, will they show the up? Right around the corner. Yeah, what we're asking is not going to take much time anyways, is, is okay. community involvement. So I would say October. All right, we'll put you on in October. It's October 16th. All right. Thank you. We'll see you then. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, guys. And um, Council, if you could send us that MOU. Absolutely. And, yes, please. You know, if he can meet with the association as well. No problem. Thank you. And, and by the way, if you get some associations that will sign an MOU have that sent to us also. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, with the board's uh, permission, the next application is CCB 23-71 Culture, Jersey City, Inc. Nice to see you again, Mr. Lean. When you get situated, please enter your appearance into the record. Uh, <clears throat> tell us what this application is about and who is going to be testifying. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mondello. Uh, for the record, uh, Tom Lean of Connell Foley on behalf of the applicant. Uh, the application before you this evening is a class five uh, retail application for a diversity-owned business. It is located at 71 Pollock Avenue. Uh, it is located in the uh, Route 440 Culver Redevelopment Plan. Uh, the site is an existing uh, garage slash uh, auto body shop. Uh, retail is a permitted use in the zone. And uh, we actually have submitted for uh, a planning board approval, but based on the uh, ordinance adopted by the city council last Thursday, uh, the retail uses will now be uh, pr uh, any area where retail is a pr principal permitted use, cannabis. Did uh, not go to the planning board. That is correct. But you already so, went to the zoning board for an interpretation. That is correct. So um, there, there is kind of a long history here. Uh, initially, the zoning officer, when it was Mr. Taylor, yeah. uh, did determine that he did not think retail was a permitted use here. Uh, we appealed that decision to the zoning board. The zoning board uh, overturned Mr. Did, Taylor's did you decision. Go, did you go to, I, I understand you went to the, the zoning office. Did you go to the planning board? Did they, because I thought I read that the planning board knocked it down. 
That is incorrect. No, the, the, the appropriate appeal process for a determination yeah. of the zoning officer okay. is to the zoning board. The zoning board unanimously overturned uh, Mr. Taylor's decision. Yeah. Um, and based upon? Based upon the fact that the wording in the um, the redevelopment plan is a little uh, inexact. It, 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 it essentially says retail is permitted under certain conditions. If you if you build a mid-rise a mid building, otherwise building. That the is site correct. is only allowed for auto body. And once you change the use, the pre-existing use is no longer legal. That is correct. The uh, the basis of our argument before the appeal, the zoning board was essentially that our ordinance doesn't uh, state that retail needs to be a conditionally permitted use or there's it just simply needs to be a permitted use in the zone as a whole and it is permitted as a use in the zone as a whole in fact it's a principally permitted use or the zoning so yes when, when you say zoning are you talking about the regular ordinance or are you talking about the redevelopment plan i am talking about the ordinance uh regarding where cannabis is permitted within redevelopment plans it states that the zone must permit uh, retail within the zone. But, but, and again, I understand that this is not the venue for the, this argument, but since I was past chairman of the planning board, I have a little knowledge on this. So, again, the redevelopment plan did state that they wanted this mid-rise location that you could build upon it and have a retail at the bottom floor. The, the, that's what the that's what the redevelopment plan. The says. redevelopment plan says retail is a permitted use if you develop a class five, uh, excuse me, a mid rise, mid -rise. building. Right. But the ordinance, the cannabis ordinance, says class five retail uses are permitted in any zone where retail is a permitted principal use. So, it's, you're saying that the city ordinance trumps the state land use law. I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that our ordinance says you become a principal permitted use in any redevelopment plan where retail is a permitted use. And the zoning board agreed with us that even though there is a conditionality to that uh, pr permitted principal use, it, it still is a, allowed as a principal permitted use because it's, first off, it's listed in the redevelopment plan, retail within a, a class five and our ordinance says any place where retail is a permitted principal use class five retail uses are permitted on top of that it couldn't be considered a conditional use retail couldn't be considered a, uh, um, a conditional use because there's case law that says it needs to be specifically identified in your zoning ordinance as a conditional use so our cannabis law says if retail is considered a permitted principal use then Class five retailers are permitted as a, a conditional use within the zone. So and there was some back and forth about uh, it had to be on the first floor. The ordinance doesn't say it had to Correct. be on the first floor. Correct. The bottom line is that the zoning board had no problem with it, and you're allowed to put a retail cannabis establishment there. So your argument basically is that every redevelopment plan in Jersey City, which over numbers over 90, you can put this uh, cannabis location anywhere in the city. That's not what I said. I say, I, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying that. I'm, I'm saying that if retail is a principal permitted use, and then yes. And that's further backed up by the fact that the city council just passed an ordinance affirming that. It removed it as a conditional use and made it a principal permitted use in any redevelopment plan where retail is a principal permitted use. So yes, if, if, if retail is permitted in a residential zone, you're going to have a cannabis business there. <laughs> well, it's also saying that if you have it in the, the redevelopment plans are kind of void if it says yeah, uh, retail is a permitted use. So anyway. In any event, um, all right. So we're, we're past that. We know the zoning board uh, sided with you with respect to the interpretation. Uh, is there anything else you want to add before we call your first witness? I, I have nothing else to add. I do just want to just briefly run down who is here today, and then I will uh, go to my sure. first witness. So uh, first I have uh, seated to my right uh, Devin Julian, who is the CEO. Uh, I have Bereji McCoy, who is uh, the um, Chief Officer of Communication, and finally, uh, Nicole Harrison-Garcia, who is our Community Re uh, Relations Liaison. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Julian provide the majority of the testimony as CEO, but the, uh, the other individuals here will introduce themselves and give you a little background on their involvement and what their, um, their involvement will be going forward. 
So, Tom, I see the conditional license expired. That is correct, um, <laughs> unfortunately. And you couldn't, you couldn't have filed for a conversion. No. Did you apply for an extension? We did apply for an extension. Uh, they it. actually asked us to simply... That was in the packet. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, they, they simply asked us to, to actually fully reapply. Same application. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that has been filed. Um, again, there's been holdups here with the appeal to the board. Uh, this was actually filed with the planning board back in November. And that was when the board kind of made a switch and said, no, actually, we want you to go and get your approval from this board before we process it through the planning board. So this is just... Well, that would be the city council. We didn't make that that's, decision. That's correct. We made that's a recommendation yes. that it makes sense to come here before the planning board. But the problem was that this board didn't exist. So the planning board... Was, that was that is correct. So, <laughs> so this, this application really did get caught up in sort okay. of the crossfire so, there. Yeah. So where are you right now? Where are we are right now is we're before you. No, no, no. <laughs> they, 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 they. I, I was going to continue that sentence. <laughs> right. We're before no, you, no. asking for your approval this but, evening. Wait a minute. Wait. They filed for a conditional. They haven't gotten it yet. But they've gotten it before, so chances before, are they'll get it again. You refiled again. That's correct. Okay. And the, the simple reason is is all of the holdups that have ha occurred. Couldn't on get an, you couldn't get a, 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 an adjournment or postponement for six months or a year. It is what it is. Correct. Mm -hmm. Some, some correct. applicants are getting routinely you know, six months, but for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, is, this has been in various forms of a re review by the city going all the way back to the zoning letter I filed that resulted in that appeal back to July of 2022. So there's been significant holdups that have really just been dealing with various um, determinations of the city um, and trying to get the get this process uh, in front of you this evening. So your application at your status of the state is still good. They're just renewing it. Well, it's, it's not it's even pending. renewing. Brand new application. Yeah. It's, it's they're considering Brand new application. For so, a conditional license. Okay, so, so... It has to refile again. So basically... All right, I just want to clarify here. So... The conditional license that you have expired. Expired mm -hmm. on 6 2023. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Correct. And at the moment, you refiled a brand new application. Same exact application, just updating the dates. And you basically have gone to the zoning board, and now you're here. We went to the zoning board to get that letter overturned, Understood. which p granted us jurisdiction now in front of the planning board. A planning board application was filed in February of this year. Mm -hmm. At that time, we were then told, no, no, you're, you're not going to be heard by the planning board and then go to the CCB. We need you to get your approval from the right. CCB first. So your status at the state, since this expired, are you considered still an, you know, a conditional use? No, no, no. So uh, they have, they have, and, right, a, and we can hear, and we can hear something. Zero, right. where, I yeah. Okay. Say and zero. we can, and we can hear even if they don't have it. It's, Sure. It's up to the applicant. They can either get a conditional at the state or they can come to us first and then go to the state. And, and okay. I would even point out to the board, just for your consideration, this application was actually deemed complete in May while that was still valid. So it's really just been a process of getting to getting, this. Just want to yeah. clarify. No, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> deemed complete by which board? Uh, deemed complete by your office as far as the, the actual, actual CCB application. Okay. Yes. All right. So first witness, if you'd be so kind as to raise your right hand, you swear from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, my name is Devin Julian. Last name is J-U-L-I-A-N. And my address is 34442 uh, via Espinoza, uh, and that's in Dana Point, California, uh, 9264. All right, your witness, sir. Uh, Mr. Julian, uh, you are the CEO of uh, the applicant. Uh, would you uh, mind giving the overview of the application provided to the, the board, keeping in mind that the board has reviewed the documents that have submitted, um, but just kind of go, go through the factors that the board is uh, required to consider for this application. Um, and if at any point you need to uh, refer to any of the other individuals who are here, we'll have them sworn in by the board, uh, and they can provide their testimony. Will do. Good evening, esteemed members of the board. I uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Culture Jersey City, Inc.'s business plan today. Uh, as uh, I've already been introduced, my name is Devin Julian, and I'm here to walk through our vision, strategy, and our commitment to bringing a unique and impactful cannabis retail experience to Jersey City. Uh, Culture Jersey City, or simply Culture, seeks a personal use Class 5 cannabis retail uh, license. Our purpose is to enhance the cannabis retail landscape with a strong emphasis on quality control, safety, uh, community engagement, and social equ equality. 
Um, at Culture, our core ethos guides every decision we make. We are deeply committed to compliance with state and local laws. Uh, we have collaborated with subject matter experts and local officials to ensure that our operations align seamlessly with the current regulations. We currently have nine adult use retail stores open in California, one store uh, medical open in Mississippi, and one store open in um, Akron within the next two to three weeks. We have four stores um, in Ohio, four stores uh, finishing construction and final inspections in California in the next 30 days, and another 20 retail uh, licenses approved in various stages of entitlement within their respective jurisdictions. Um, Culture is a certified minority-owned, woman-owned business, properly qualified. Annie Fan, our majority owner, controls 51% of the enterprise and has personally funded the startup. Alongside her, I am the CEO of Culture Cannabis Club in California, bringing invaluable experience to the Jersey market. We've also embraced the expertise of uh, Nicole Garcia, a Jersey City local with deep community ties. We have secured a prime location at 71 Pollock Avenue, complying with zoning requirements and a prime retail spot in Ward B. Our facility promises accessible public entry and strong security measures. We've compared our location to other approved locations as, as in Ward B, as well as neighboring Wards A and F. In Ward B, our location is at least 2,200 feet away from the nearest approved retailer, which is on 490 Westside Avenue. In Ward A, our location is at least 3,800 feet from the nearest approved retailer, which is 154 Martin Luther King Drive. And in Ward F, our location is 400 feet away from the nearest retailer, which is 539 Martin Luther King Drive. We are well over the 1,000 feet from another retailer at this time, which is why 71 Pollock is a really excellent location for the business, serving a new quarter of the city, tapping into the growing commercial businesses along the waterfront as well. Our delivery is to create a seamless and discreet shopping experience. We will adhere to Jersey City's design standards while maintaining our brand identity. Our Class 5 retail license will allow us to make necessary tenant improvements while keeping the exterior design consistent. I apologize. Uh, forgive me. And I know you're on a roll and you're doing fantastic, but uh, there were two things that were brought to my attention by uh, the commissioners. Um, <clears throat> where is Annie Fan? F H A N. This board always wants to hear from the majority owner. Mm -hmm. Understood. She had some family commitments that she wasn't able to break uh, and and be here this evening. Understood. Second, uh, I'll let the realtor speak to that. One thing that we require, and I think you were here earlier on, is that you have to have site control. Mm -hmm. uh, the letter of intent that you have is not a lease. And in the second paragraph, it clearly says non-binding. Therefore, that is not considered a site control of the property. Because non-binding means that terms can change. They could lease it to somebody else with better uh, ability. So, uh, and you have a signed lease. I, the, ap the application indicates you have a signed lease. I, I need to double check, but I am almost positive I submitted a signed lease to yeah. uh, the Division right, of Commerce. Because right here, all I have is from 3-1-2022. There was a second round of submissions uh, in, I want to say, April. Um, I, I have to go take a look in my, yeah, my I file. I, and it may have been, because I'm usually pretty good on this. Looking for leases. Because I, I, I'm, I'm almost positive that we... All right. I mean, but regardless, uh, and I, I can don't double doubt check, you. Yes. No, yeah. Double check. And they're looking it up right now. Okay. Anyway, uh, but the majority owner is the person that the state looks to, the city looks to, and this board looks to. Uh, having testimony on her behalf and she's not here is a non-starter. I understand that. Um, I, I will state that uh, Ms. Fan is a resident of California. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I understand the, that. Yes. But and, we're residents of Jersey City. <laughs> and, 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 and I understand that. Um, the, the individuals who are before you today are the people who will be the on-the-ground operators. But they're, they're not employees. responsible, as the state basically says, that it's the person who is the majority owner. That's the, you know, the state regulation that right. the city's ordinance is based upon. That's 51%. So she has the voting power to overrule what these people want to do. Understood. 
So, and I think we might also be missing some documents. Yeah, and if, if you said you submitted um, a lease, we, we don't. Yeah, have I, that. I, I have. Okay, to so I, 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 yeah, I, I don't, her I files, wouldn't. my files. I, I don't see that. I don't, yeah, I don't see her ID either. Yeah, that was definitely submitted. So okay. that's a, yeah. so. Uh, what I have is Nicole's yes. Garcia's. I, I don't have any other applicants' um, identification either. All right. Uh, so, in, in, in that case, I mean, obviously, you could <laughs> demand that the board move to a vote. I think that would probably be like selecting the electric chair at this point. Um, so, uh, unless you have any objection, uh, I'm guessing that the board's going to make a motion to carry this matter. Right. And they're going to want to hear from this California resident. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. In person. I mean, yes. the days of Zoom, unfortunately, I know we, we had something in Hoboken, and I'm not sure if it was the same individual, but it was the same name. Right. She was able to testify that way, but that's not that's the right. way this works. Either. If I have to take my time to be here, the applicant has to be here. Yep. You should be in person. I understand. Right. So uh, our October is really, really packed. So either November or December. Do you want to continue with the application up until that point? And just no, um, no, absolutely not. No. I, I want to hear from the majority owner. What did you say? Um, November. November would be the earliest. I would request, given the amount of time that this has been pending, considering that this file this was filed with the planning board way back when, when the the process was to go to the yeah, planning board first. Um, and you know we've been deemed complete since May. You have We're, no control over the calendar. Yeah, absolutely, that I, I understand. Does. All all I'm saying. First is of all, let, let me just say this: yeah. this board has been meeting nonstop. We've heard over 70 applications. We have requested the council to give us more authority to do what we think is right, and it has not been granted to us. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm here. I understand. Your client's not. I understand. If you can't or hear the, uh, go forward with the application tonight, that's it. Otherwise, wherever, it, I, 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 again, my philosophy has been that we've already had nights where we heard six applications and by the time 11 o'clock came we were burnt out and it's not right so it you know we will not hear more than four or five applications in a night so if october's booked november is the earliest or december your choice i i understand yes i i, I, I was just yeah putting and i'd the, like to take a look at the, the whole record. application there's obviously things yeah, missing i don't see a missing, community yeah. impact i don't see anyone's id i don't see the lease agreement i, I, I like don't see any more yeah yeah and I'm sure I'm, you probably I'm just, submit it, but I'm confused I, I because I, I have an email stating you're deemed complete. We have everything, and that's, that's well, that's I'm, fine. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. once again, you can take the crapshoot and roll the dice. It, it, tonight, November, October, whenever uh, December. November. But you're hearing, if you've been sitting here the whole night, you've heard what we require. We're the people voting on it. Understood, Commissioner. I, I was simply putting the request on the record. I, if it's impossible for us to be heard in October, we will well, be. Well, it's not in October. It's going to be the. I understand no, that right. request came from your client, not necessarily you, and I understand where he's coming from, but he, he certainly understands where the board's coming from. Right. And my suggestion to you is to make sure that every document's here. And one of the things that we basically uh, really rely upon is the social impact in the neighborhood and the community. Uh, the fact that, you know, uh, what, 95% uh, of the, uh, the corporation is 3,000 miles away, I would suggest that you, you do some homework and hit the streets and talk to the community. Understood. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, All right, is there, um, I'll make a motion for an adjournment. Is there a second? second. second. All okay. in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Aye. All right. We shall see you, hopefully, what was the date? November? November, um, Maynard. It? November, December. Which one's better? Nope. November 13th. November 13th. November 13th. Thank you very much. Thank you for, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time job. this evening. Right. And if, you know, just ensure that Annie's here as well on that day. Understood. All right. Uh, with the board's permission, CCB 23-73, just chill them. All right. Rose, nice to see you again when you get situated. Uh, please enter your appearance into the record. Give us a brief overview of what the application is and who's going to be testifying. Sure. This is an awesome one. Mm -hmm. It is. 
Good evening again. Rosemary Moyana Matos of Law Office of Rosemary Moyana Matos LLC on behalf of the applicant, Just Chillum LLC. Just Chillum is an MB applicant seeking a standard retail license to be located at 821 Newark Street. Our sole witness this evening is Jeff Joseph, who is the sole owner and CEO of Just Chillum's parent company, Bread Soup LLC. Bread Soup LLC owns 100% of the applicant. Mr. Joseph is prepared to provide testimony with respect to his application and to answer any questions that the board may have. Plus, I, un I understand you have a long commute to work. <laughs> <laughs> Please raise your right hand. This we're from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you got. Yes, I your do. witness counsel. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, Jeff Joseph, J O S E P H, 821 New York Avenue. Welcome, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Joseph, can you please provide the board with your background um, and also um, speak to the key components of your application? All right. <clears throat> Where do I begin? Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Joseph, and before I begin, I would like to thank you all for this opportunity to be here today. This is something I could only have dreamt of while growing up in New York City. I'll give you a short but sweet background of myself telling you who I am, where I come from, and why I'm here today in front of you all. I was born and raised in Canarsie, Brooklyn as a first generation Haitian American. Growing up in the city in the late 80s and 90s, I've seen a lot and have been through a lot. Through these experiences, I've learned a lot about myself, the community, and the system. I remember the days when my neighbor was released from jail for marijuana possession. We'd sit on the stoop and he'll tell me stories of what happened while being incarcerated. I could hear the anger in his voice uh, as, as he kept on saying it didn't make sense why he was randomly stopped and frisked just on his way to, to the grocery store to get us just a way to go to the grocery store, and for one small dime back, land him back in jail. At that point, I was a young teen. I had been stopped in fricks at least twice myself. I remember when I coupled my feelings with where it was at opposite ends of the spectrum, I shrugged it off because it was just another day for me. But I was also grateful to be alive after being shoved and told, stayed out of trouble, kid. Now, as a preteen, I saw the direct negative impact to my community. Stopped in frisk was removing fathers, sons, and brothers from their homes. Now, this isn't something new, but this imprinted onto me, turning me into who I am. I saw clearly what I didn't want to happen to my own family. Looking back, I'm lucky to have been raised by a strict but loving father who kept me in line and never spared the iron rod. As a young child, he told me I only had four options in life to choose from, lawyer, doctor, engineer, or death. Glad you didn't pick lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> or death. <laughs> of course, the fourth was not the top choice. <laughs> I chose to take up engineering in undergrad and study industrial engineering. I enjoyed that work so much that I pursued my master's in industrial engineering. I also earned my MBA from the University of Connecticut and proceeded to work in the aerospace industry, IT consulting industry, and now the financial services. Most would look at me and look at my background and consider my educational and professional accomplishments as a success. After all, I didn't end up a statistic. Many have told me, Jeff, you did it, you made it. While I'm truly grateful and I'm far from the definition of success, though my father gave me those only four options, my passion and goal has always been to be a self-made business owner. Just like my father, he was a self-taught mechanic who was given the opportunity to work, run, and eventually own the mechanic shop he works at and owns today. Growing up, I saw my father work six days a week, 12 to 15 hours a day. He explained that while it was important for him to put food on the table, it was equally important to create opportunities for his employees. There were other immigrants that weren't given the time of day, not because they lacked skill or drive, but because they looked different and sounded different. He wanted to focus on upskilling and keeping local talent. He saw this was the way to have community grow within. I didn't really understand it for many years until I started asking his staff why they wanted to be a mechanic. Nine out of 10 times, they said I never wanted to be a mechanic. I was always surprised, but what came next always surprised me even more. They would tell me that my dad was the only person that offered them a legitimate opportunity to make a living. He was the only person who didn't put stock on their past mistakes and allowed them to prove themselves the pr in the present and future. When I asked my father about this, all he said is, I'm only doing what someone, did, what someone else did for me. He didn't have to offer me a job, but he did, so I want to do the same. Fast forward to today. Your approval will enable me to, me to have the same opportunity to pay it forward. I've been a resident tenant at 821 New York Avenue for the past decade and have a good relationship with my landlord, mostly to, mostly to never missing a, a rent payment. During the last 10 years, I've, give, I've gotten to know my landlord very well 
and seen him provide opportunities to small businesses in Little India, similar to my, to my father. He wanted to pay it forward and help people grow their business. From Indian grocery stores, restaurants, snack shops, all have taken a turn at this location. In the past several years, I've heard, I've heard his voice of concern because four of the businesses have failed in the past three years. He's worried about his retirement because all but one of his tenants still owes him back rent, dating back to 2011, not just the last three years. Recently, he confided in me that he would be open to uh, other types of businesses, something of out of the ordinary for the area because clearly ordinary wasn't working. I mentioned to him that I was, if there was ever opportunity for me to rent his commercial space, <laughs> to please let me know as I was exploring the cannabis industry. He told me he'll keep me posted. Well, that time came this year. He told me he, uh, well, well yep, yep, sorry. I ran, through, I ran him through my business plan, my analysis, and had an in-depth conversation regarding this dream of mine. I'm so appreciative he is supporting my dreams of paying it forward and empowering me to create opportunities just like he and my father both have. Now, this journey didn't happen overnight. It's not your typical journey, nor should it be. This, ha this has been a lot of moving pieces, obstacles, heartache, long nights, and get me to get me here today. The one common theme in my life has always been to pay it forward to others. My father always taught me to make the most of every opportunity, do the things that people don't want to do, and embrace challenging obstacles, and pray for the luck on your side as well. <laughs> With your help, I'll be able to pay it forward for those in our community. Now that I've shared who I am, let's get into what Ch Just Chillum is about, what we have done, and what we'll be doing going forward. Just Chillum is a minority-owned business, and I'm 100% owner and a 24-7 contact. I want to give you a quick overview of our community impact and what we've what we've partnered and volunteered with programs associated and aligned with our company values. Starting with New Jersey Reentry Corporation, I spend my time presenting on topics like job readiness and address questions that participants must, might have for re-entering the workforce. And JRC's mission to remove all barriers to, em to employment for citizens returning from jail or prison is dear to me. I believe that people do deserve another shot as long as they put in the work for it. Second, we sponsored the Hoffman Center, the THC Sponge Program, which is founded and led by Michael Hoffman. He hosts cannabis expungement clinics and prepares petitions for those seeking expungements. I'm no longer in touch with my old neighbor, but it's, I hope he's found a program like the THC Sponge. Third, my company has an MOU with Jersey City Mural Arts Program, each year prioritizing Ward C. We plan to sponsor a mural through this beautification program. This program spoke to me because of the use their youth rehabilitation value. When teens are picked up for graffiti, JC Maps put them back to work by teaching them to paint and restore murals to fulfill their community service hours. Fourth, Just Chillin plans to be a member of the Jersey City Asian Merchant Association so that we could best support local cultural festivals within India Square. Fifth, my company plans to continue volunteering for the Tom Zuper Civic Association. Our recent Mother's Day meal plan meal prep and delivery to Grandview, uh, Grandview Terrace was a huge success. I'm excited for more events that allow me to be connected directly face-to-face -face with my community. Six, Just Shillam will continue donating and volunteering at the annual Thanksgiving Turkey Drive, where we collaborate with other cannabis retailers to donate turkeys to locals. We unload the, tur we unload the truck of frozen turkeys and personally deliver them to the community members. Last but not least, we have Team Wilderness. Team Wilderness is a nonprofit dedicated to provide experiences to teach urban teenagers teamwork, leadership, character through outdoor activities. Our MIU promises a portion of our donation will be earmarked to the Wilderness Club, which is an after school photography program at Mahatma Gandhi at PS23. Growing up in Brooklyn, I wish I had access to a program like this. Sadly, the concrete jungle didn't provide peace and serenity that only nature could offer. <laughs> Team Wilderness challenges and empowers teens control team wilderness challenges and empowers teens through controlled obstacles such as descending from a high cliff with a rope or steep hikes up a mountain the ability to step out your comfort zone while knowing you have trusted adults to guide you allows the teens to grow and realize they're truly capable of so much more scary yes but it's eye-opening for those young kids growing up in the inner city in terms of community outreach i first spoke to councilman Baggiano and he didn't object to my business plan. Then I spoke to the owners and, and managers of neighboring jewelry shops, jewelry stores, grocery stores, clothing stores, and restaurants. I addressed their concerns about odors, children, security, and age verification process. They agreed that an increased security presence would be a good for India Square. 
I also gave the Journal Square Community Association an overview of Just Chillum. They informed me that as a policy, they always take a neutral position about cannabis businesses. In terms of social equity, workforce development, and hiring practices, our goal is to hire locally whenever possible. We, on, we plan on hiring 18 employees with an average wage of $20 per hour. We have a labor peace agreement with cannabis engineers, extractors, and distributors, local to 420. We want, to work, we, want to work our, we want a workforce to mirror the diversity of Jersey City and believe there's no shortage of talent within our own city. As a proximity to the closest cannabis retailer approved by the CCB, that would be 655 New York Avenue, which is more than 1,900 feet away. Briefly about our security plan, we plan to have armed guards, yep, 24-7 recording cameras, proximity locks, and other security features to remain compliant with all state requirements. To sum it up, my location at 821 Newark is a perf perfect location for myself, just Chillum. It's over 500 feet from schools and parks. Our location is not only a commercial area, but it's also part of the Journal Square, Journal Square 2060 redevelop redevelopment plan. With your approval, I can start my journey on truly paving it forward. Thank you for your time and welcome any clarifications you may like. I have a real quick uh, question. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the Bread Soup LLC which is 100% owned by you, and Just Chillum, which is also an LLC, is that owned by you or is that owned by Red Soup LLC? I'm trying to figure out it, yeah. the connection. I can go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. So he created the entity Bread Soup LLC back in 2021. I believe it was the intent to start that as as his original store name. Subsequently, he entered. He was in negotiations with uh, Cookies to do a licensing deal, which fell through. Um, mm. When he he had created the Cookies LLC entity. He, once that deal fell through, he created the he changed the name of Cookies NJ right. to Just Chillum, right. and then through a series of uh, his operating agreement, he created um, he had Bread Soup LLC listed as the hundred percent owner. So it's a parent company of um, Just Chillum, and he filed oh. his business registration oh. with the state listing. So he doesn't own one hundred percent. Bread Soup does. Bread Soup owns 100%. Correct. You own 100%. And then you he owns 100% gotcha. of Bread so Soup. It's a, right. The shell. It's and a parent. And <laughs> it's, a, and, uh, it's a shell over a shell. Right. So at this uh, point, the intent is for it to be an asset holding company. Okay. And um, so is Bread Soup or is it just Chillin? Chillin, excuse me. Uh, that has applied to the state. Chillin. Just Chillin. Chillin. Okay. Has to be. Yes. Because that's the name of right. Okay. So Bread Soup would be considered an entity of interest as the parent company of the. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Sure. Yeah. I had the same question. Yeah, because I we read the yeah, the yeah, name change. This close. We read it. I know you presented the name change, but then we saw this additional entity here. So sure. clarification purposes. Any other questions for uh, Jeff as, through his testimony? I want a motion to go into session. To second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. I have a question yeah. for you. Sure. Um, JC Maps is a program that's run by the city of Jersey City, partially funded by grants that they receive. What is JC Maps? That's the Jersey City Mural Program. Oh. And that's, that's one of your Aye. MOUs, or is that one of your companies that not, uh, you? Not yet, because we're, that's we're part. a work session, though. So we're not well, I asked them the, a question. Okay. It's yeah. my fault. You know, I need to know that in order to figure out if there's a okay. conflict. So well, for, is that one of your, your did you sign an MOU not or yet. whatever you want to call it? So part of Jersey Maps, the way that it works is they won't sign an MOU sure. until we pass through CCP and get the approval. Then they'll be able to sign a, an actual MOU. Okay, but the plan is that if this works out, you're going to what, give them money? I have an issue with that. Oh, well, hold on a second. We'll get there. Um, but that's what's going to happen, right? If you're, uh, that is going to be one of your partners, one of your community impacts. Okay. Do you direct where money goes with respect? To Absolutely. You're do. out. You're out. Not only that, it's also it's under Hold JC on. Maps is under the City of Jersey City Division of Cultural Affairs. Yeah. It's not a private or a nonprofit organization. We just yeah. lost uh, majority. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so how, how we, we, there, we opened the meeting with a quorum. Um, well, they could still get this application with two votes. You okay. could recuse your... I, 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 I can't no. either, because I... Yeah, but you don't control the money. 
You, we do. She does. I am the director of that division that controls that, and he is the assistant director. Wait, so we, we allocate funding. Yeah, to that. see, that's it's, it's not attenuated. The, yeah. These guys, it's not like being a member of a church. They're the trustees, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just spoke to my client, and if this is, presents a conflict issue with the board, he's willing to withdraw any participation with the program. All right. Okay. So you haven't signed anything. There's no obligation. That's removed from the application. We're that's in good fine. shape. Okay. okay. I just, we wanted to disclose yeah. completely yeah. on the record and be completely transparent, so. All right, back into regular session. Motion. Motion. Second. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, okay. Okay. Uh, any questions for uh, no. Jeff, Mr. Joseph, I should say, on his testimony thus far? No. I like his name. <laughs> He's got two first names. Uh, anyone from the audience, questions and questions only for Mr. Joseph. Well, you know what I do. All right, hearing none, seeing none. Any other witnesses? Uh, we do not have any other witnesses, but there are members of the public here to speak in favor. Anyone from Team Wilderness? Okay. Awesome. Or, uh, okay. With who? Thank from you. Who? Team um, Wilderness. Please step oh, up to no, the yeah, microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Raise your right hand. This is where affirm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Uh, turn that microphone on. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, Stephen Cunningham, C uh, U N N I N G H A M, 18 Elizabeth Street, number two, Jersey City, 07306. And who do you represent, or what do you want? Uh, I'm the founder and executive director of Team Wilderness. And what is that? Uh, Team Wilderness is a nonprofit uh, here in Jersey City that size, serves primarily youth in Jersey City, um, but also youth throughout the count, greater county area. All right. And have you had some conversations with this applicant? Oh, Mr. in great Joseph, detail. Tell us about them. What's going to happen? What's going to transpire between your organization and his? Sure. Um, first, let me say, as a nonprofit, we have actually been approached by a few places. They did not really know much about us, didn't do any research. Um, and when we tried to call them back, you know, to see if we're following up, if we're being a part of this, we wouldn't get returned calls. <laughs> so, so, um, I, I juxtapose that with our experience with Just Chillum, which has been, um, phenomenal. Um, when we were approached by Just Chillum, uh, they knew each and every one of our programs and had one program in specifically that they wanted to earmark these funds for. Which one is that? That's what we call Wilderness Club, which is an after school program at PS23. Um, it is a, a mentoring and tutoring program that provides these services on weekdays for kids. And then on the weekends, they go out on um, outdoor adventures like hiking, uh, kayaking, rock climbing, uh, things that they would never normally have an opportunity mm -hmm. to experience and things that they can That's grow great. from. Yeah, and they, how is Mr. Joseph way. going to expedite that or facilitate that, I should say? Is it money? Is it uh, volunteer time? Yeah. Sure. So we have a signed MOU where he specifically mm -hmm. allocated $10,000 to Team Wilderness in the first year. We found this incredibly generous. I mean, I don't know much about running a business. I know about running a nonprofit, and the first year is the hardest. Right. So we found that to be incredibly generous. That's what's stated in the MOU. Uh, mm -hmm. He also asked... What could we use the funds? Where are we having financial struggles? And I really believe this to be, he wanted to ensure that the money was going to the right place and not just some nonprofit he found online. Um, so we were really impressed by that. Um, he also asked, while it's not in the MOU, if he could personally volunteer if there was a need for it, um, which, which I love to hear because a lot of people that come to us and volunteer, they want to volunteer where they want to volunteer, <laughs> not where we have the demand or the need for youth to be inspired by people like uh, Mr. Jeff Joseph. Excellent, thank you. Any thank questions you. for this witness? No, I think you run a phenomenal um, organization and I've had a couple kids that come to an internship with me that have come from Team Wilderness. You do a great job. Awesome, if I could add one more quick comment. While I do not speak for uh, PS23 or Jersey City Public Schools, they have twice asked me when the funds for this is going to come in because they're very eager to receive them. I'll give you a check tonight. <laughs> 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 My bounce. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate yes, that. Thank you for your testimony. Anyone else? Right. Uh, good evening. Raise your right hand. Do you swear firm the testimony about the give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Job you got. You put your hand down, turn the microphone on. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, my name is Amy Huang. Uh, last name is spelled H-U-A-N-G. Um, address is 821 New York Ave, Jersey City. What would you like to tell the board? I uh, just wanted to come here and speak on behalf of Jeff's character and also just how I feel about 
um, a dispensary being opened up in my neighborhood, um, literally right downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just wanted to say I have no concerns with it opening or operating. Um, been living in Jersey City for almost 10 years now at this location on Newark Ave for a couple of years. Really love the neighborhood, great restaurants, great mom and pop shops around. Um, I really think this business opening there is just gonna help increase traffic flow, um, customers just getting to check out you know, what Little India has to offer, uh, which I think is really great. Um, and then also on behalf of Jeff's character, I've known him for a long time. He's always been the person in our group who's giving us great advice about how to be just financially better with our lives, with our careers, um, just being organized in general. <laughs> He's just always been that type of person um, and general asset, I would say, um, to all of us. Um, so yeah, IP's incredibly smart, incredibly educated. He's proven track record of being able to run successful businesses. Um, and I just wanted to he's say- he's an engineer, he's not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he made the right choice, right? Yeah. Um, so I just want to say I have the most faith um, that he will absolutely kill it with Thank this opportunity. You. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Speech, Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, come on up. Uh. <clears throat> All right, uh, good evening, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. You can put your hand down, put, turn the uh, microphone on. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Okay, my name's On Co. Last name spelled K O. Uh, Where do you live? Address number two, Crane Street, Little Falls, New Jersey. What would you like to tell the board? Okay, um, I here formally express my support for Just Calling, located at 821 Newark Avenue in General Square. I bought this building in 1988. Wow. I used it as a workshop uh, for my family run. Uh, so machine business. My wife and I now retired and we rely on this rental income. Over the past six years, I have had four restaurants tenants and all of them failed. They have struggled to pay rent and caused a lot of financial struggles for my family. With more than 35 restaurants in that area, the competition is very strong. After analyzing the market, I realized that the commercial space is too big to be a restaurant and too small to be a banquet hall, too big to be a jewelry store, and too small to be a grocery store. Jeff has been my uh, residential tenant for more than 10 years. He's the best tenant I have ever had. He <laughs> always pays on time and keeps the place nice and neat. <laughs> After conducting my own industrial research and reviewing his business plan, I believe that all Jeff needs to succeed is my property. That's why I fully support him and his business. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll close that public portion of the meeting. Any other witnesses? No. You want to sum up or say anything else? I, I have a question Go before ahead. you do that, Council. Um, in your community impact and social responsibility statement, you've mentioned that you met with uh, Councilman Bogiano. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how that went a little bit? <laughs> um, it, I'm not going to impersonate him, so I don't want to get into No, you don't have to do um, that. I don't think anybody <laughs> could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it went as good as it could go um, okay. as far as, you know, he's a retired police officer, you mm -hmm. know, um, councilman, of course. Uh, but I always say, like, you need to talk to people that are for and against you, mm -hmm. right? Um, whether they like, you, like I always said, you could respect each other but not have the same values, mm -hmm. right? So the fact that he said, look, I'm not going to fight you on this, and but because he, he knows my character, he goes... It's your, you know, you, I don't, I don't approve, I don't approve it myself for my values, but I'm not going to deny you what you want to okay. do. So that's where it's at. So he abstained in a right. sense. And then you mentioned that he helped you connect with um, some nonprofits. Uh, yes. And that as far as where he said, get in contact with the community. That's the first thing. So that's okay. why we started doing different researching okay. um, to see what was out there. 
And okay. did you meet with the community of Indian Square? Like, did you yes. meet with their SID? So, yes, and we actually had a, yes. So I went to each shops to the left, to the right, across the street. Uh, surprisingly, they all were happy that something was going up because the, the first thing they said was, we rather see the, the, the gates open than closed. Right. right. Two, they said, it's your, bus- it's, your bu- it's your business. It's illegal. So do what you want to do. Uh, three, uh, they appreciated the time um, that we took to go ask them. Um, to and present to them, you know, what we were doing, you know, out of respect, right? Um, and three, you know, we, uh, four, we said that, you know, we think about security guards and so forth, and they were very open to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we done? I'm ready for a motion? Yeah, I'm ready for a motion. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we approve CCB 23-73, Just Chillin, LLC, at 821 Newark Avenue, Class 5, Retail. I second. All right, roll call. Vice Chair Cantorero. Aye. Commissioner Kaplowitz. I will say that your application was a pleasure to read and listen to you, sir. Uh, it was hit all the marks, and uh, I like to see things on that block. My uncle and aunt owned a building and a store uh, on the block. It was 8-something. I just don't remember which one it was. Uh, and to the landlord, Mr. Coe, I don't think you have to worry with Mr. Joseph because uh, I don't think his business will go up in smoke. <laughs> no. So I vote yes. Good luck. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank Commissioner you. Double. Yes, I do. And I'm very happy to see that we'll be having a uh, smoke shop in that, I mean, cannabis <laughs> shop in that area. Thank you. All right. Motion carries. So you're two for two this evening. Thank you. Okay. Best of luck. <laughs> I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice uh, night. We have some uh, resolutions mm-hmm. very quickly. Yes, fact, we do. And then, we, and then we're going to discuss. We'd like to mm-hmm. have some discussion afterwards. Mm-hmm. Okay. If I could maybe get two minutes to run to the, the restroom. Absolutely. After that. Sure. Can. Uh, so uh, why not do the one we just heard? Just uh, chill them. <clears throat> can I have a motion followed by a uh, second? Motion. Report? Second. All right. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. That carries. And also, while we're at it, uh, Vox uh, Forms. Can I get a uh, motion followed Mo- by a second? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Those two resolutions are now adopted. And if we could perhaps take, I think you, you could leave. Uh, Jeff, do we need, we have audio. Do we need the transcriber for what, my understanding, right? Is that right? Is <laughs> She's like, yeah. We, we <laughs> no, don't need, you're good. Okay. Jeff, unplug her whenever she. All right. I'm All right. I'm just going to run a few um, mine. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens once I unplug you. Okay. Unplug. Unplug. Just give me a minute and I will I promise to be back in less than two. Approved. Adjourned. Adjourned. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah they all have a <laughs> I don't want anybody to know who I am. <laughs> Even though I know I that's tough to I'll, believe. I just thought we can improve the professionalism up here. I think I like that. If anybody, uh, if any applicants want to address us, I think it's easier. They read it then. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, I mean truly, it was Sonia's idea, to be completely honest. <laughs> Absolutely. Women are smarter. And then I agreed. I was like, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I apologize, but if you'll give me uh, yep. Take two eight. minutes. Thank you. You know, when nature calls. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All right, guys. So we're going to go back in session, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I've forgotten. There's one other uh, resolution that needs to be memorialized. Uh, memorialized. Art. Is art. 44 yep. Co. LLC. This this was a very time-consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's single space, 13 pages. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that uh, it was brutal. Uh, to read. I, I've that, read it. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a very. It was a very difficult read. I, I get it, um, but it's it's very important that. These denials, um, there's reasons why mm-hmm. you deny and I've, it. And I've, I've, I think, I've read it. And I think right. there's plenty of reasons mm-hmm. for this. Yep. Particular. So uh, I, I would ask for a motion to memorialize this resolution, followed by a second. Motion. motion. Oh, second. Okay. And uh, let me see. Everyone is eligible because everyone voted yes to deny. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So we had a discussion earlier on, and we wanted to talk regarding uh, how to move forward, which came up tonight when we started talking about pin in the, in the map. The first 
the first board meeting, if I'm correct, that we had was in May of 2022. We need to know what the status of these applications. I think that we have to have a timeline. It can't go on for two, three years, and because it's denying someone else the right to open up a cannabis store if this person hasn't gotten their license. And you know, we have to have a, uh, uh, so, a, a we, timeline. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ron. There's a timeline that's established by the state. Okay. That was part of the conversation that I've had with some of the council members. Okay. It doesn't really seem fair for us to establish a different timeline than what the state's allowing. So okay. there's an extension, well, you, there's a two-year period. I think, I think, let me just supplement that, if I might. <clears throat> so picture this. Um, <clears throat> a conditional license holder um, can't find a property, and they ask the state for an extension, and they get a, a year. It, it, it happens. Um, and at the end of the day, they have no money, they right. can't find a property, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in an instance like that, you may want to find out what's going on. Now, even, but here's the problem. Even if we, sit, we, we find out what's going on or, or we bring the applicant in and, I'm sorry, I can't find property, I don't have any money. Um, even if we were to say, well, you know, we're going to revoke your approval, if they already have a resolution of support from the governing body, what we've just done is meaningless. Unless, of course, the governing body would look at our recommendation and then decide to vacate that resolution of support. And you follow? Yeah, and that's where I would go. Because basically, I'm thinking that the applications that are now a year old, they've come to us. They've either gone prior or after us to the planning board or zoning board and we have given resolutions to the council. Right. So if they can't raise funds, that's, that's a deficiency that I don't think that we want to see in the city because that's a failure at the very start. So there has to be a timeline, and I agree with you. We have to ask, for, we have to ask the council to vacate that approval. But uh, you know. That also, you, you also have to consider um, if they have state approval. Like most of these are conditional applications that may have the resolution of support from the council, but then as they move those applications to the state, there's definitely a delay there. Okay. I mean, on average, I'm getting, and I did receive a call from the state today, when they call about an application that they're considering, it's probably two per month at this that point. That they're approving? That they're, it, they'll call right before it's going in front of their board. Okay. Your meeting. So it's like two applications per month. Where we, I mean, for Jersey City, we have a ton of applications. So let me so ask you. The process is slowing down. So if we're going to establish a timeline, I believe that timeline is going to have to be based on when the state approves that so application. Well, let me ask you, oh, just real quickly. Yeah. Let me ask this question. So the applications that you're getting inquiries from the state for their pr approval from conditional to annual, yes. when were they heard by us? Um, that I'd have to look back on. But because I, mean, I, I, did a, I did get a call today about two applications. Okay, because I'm wondering if someone is delaying their application in the state, is it the only reason I can think of if they have site control, they have our approval, they have planning or zoning, and they have a resolution from the city, it's either A, the state's extremely behind the they curve. Are. They are. They are. Or there's a money issue. Are so, we looking at the state approval for a site over a year? Um, if they're only approving two a month possibly. and we're like 70 deep, we're looking for like a year, year and a half before they we're, can even open? We're not 70 deep as far as, I mean, we've looked at 70 applications, but only yeah. 28 have been fully approval approved from okay. 31 now. Okay, so like 31, 31. applications. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I can, like, I can put together a report for the board that's going to say, you know, the dates of the okay. various approvals from, from the municipality and the one that was approved by the state. Okay. It's, it's been a that very That was going to be my process. question. Yes. Yes. Out, out of, out yes. of all of this, I was going to see if there's anything that you can prepare for us. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, right. yeah. Just kind of outlining well, the applicants okay. where they're at. Correct. And, you know, yeah. it, and, just to put things into yes. perspective for the board and itself. Some, some is, there, the is there a members. problem? Is there a problem Okay, so we know the ones that have gotten approved mm -hmm. or are in the process, but the ones that are in Never Neverland because either the state or funding or anything else, can we reach out to them and ask them 
Where are you in the process? We're actually in the process of doing that now. Oh, oh we've great. had okay. we've had that request from the, from a few council members. Yes. Great. All right, so we're we're on the same page here. Okay, good. Sounds once like the, the state's uh, pretty Once a cannabis business gets a final approval from the state, they have one year to build out okay. before they get the final final approval. Okay. So can't mess with that. Uh, you okay. know. No, I, I think from our end, if. Correct me if I'm wrong. We just wanted to see where, where the applications that we've approved so far. I think that's uh, what it is. It's everyone's you know, great because they don't know where, what the status of all these And you want to be fair to these applicants that are coming in front of you that have the funding, they have pretty much all their ducks in order, and then mm -hmm. there are those that just don't have the funding or right. just not getting state approval. Mm -hmm. And then you're it's yeah. now you're holding you're holding another applicant yeah. that we'll, we'll put has up. done all yes, their we'll due diligence. That's Absolutely. great. Thank you, Maynard. Great. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, it's good. It's what we were thinking out. about. Everybody else is thinking about. Yeah. Thank All you, right. Maynard. I Thank guess any, that's it, right? That's, that's it. it. Motion to Yeah, motion close. to adjourn. Adjourn, yep, adjourn. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.